the whole AKB48 team actually consists of 150 members and you've created five spin-off sister groups, not just here in Japan but also in Jakarta, Indonesia. Why did you decide to spread the brand to Indonesia, which is a, a Muslim country? The concept of AKB48, as I mentioned, is that anyone can join. When we built a theater in Akihabara and launched AKB48, people living in distant prefectures weren't able to go and see them perform. Because news of AKB48 had spread by way of our website, people said they want to see their performances live. That's why we created new teams with people who were born in Nagoya or Osaka. Kids in those areas can audition as well. People in Indonesia were interested in AKB48. That's why we decided to try it in Jakarta. Kids watch AKB on the internet, and they want to do the same, but they don't know whether they have the talent. Also, it's difficult to go to Japan to go through the auditions. Mr. Akimoto, you write all the lyrics to the songs, and some of them have been criticized for being overtly sexual. Critics say that they're filled with double meanings, sexual meanings, and that the girls who are performing are teenagers, some as young as 13 and 14 years of age. What is your response to this criticism? There is no criticism. The lyrics are used as metaphors. The most important thing is not to hide, but rather how to convey. I was often asked how someone like me, who is over 50, can write songs for young kids. I remember what it was like when I was a teenager. When I look back, there were sexual things and other things around that interested me. I changed them not to be dirty, but more romantic in my lyrics. There is no real direct sexual expression in my lyrics. There are more direct sexual expressions that 13 or 14 year olds could be exposed to just generally in society. But I don't intend that. I think it's better for them to have images via music or get accustomed to it through their ears and let them be more open. I think you will understand if you read my lyrics. There are no such direct expressions in my songs for teenagers. I intentionally made several sexy songs for SDN 48, an older sister group, but there are no such songs for the underage. Well, if I can read the lyrics to one of your songs for AKB 48, it's the school uniform is getting in the way. And the lyrics go something like this. I want to take off my school uniform. I want to misbehave. You can do whatever you like. I want to experience adult pleasure. That is quite suggestive, isn't it? They're not reading their diaries. It's about acting. For example, there's a song named Despised Love. This song is asking why junior high school kids kill themselves. AKB48 is singing this song. The music video is quite shocking. There is an image in the video that a kid goes up to the top of the building and is about to jump. Unless I take up the issues these girls are facing, as a songwriter, the issues won't get addressed. There are kids out there who want to take off their school uniforms and misbehave. And I'm depicting realities in their lives in which they wonder whether it's okay to think that way. I'm not forcing them. I'm picturing their private lives partly based on my imagination or newspaper articles or TV news reports. I watch what their generation is doing. The issues of bullying, suicide, traps with sugar daddies. And I'm using those issues in my songs. At the time we initiated AKB48, I asked myself, what message should we send out? At that time, I thought we will first express their realities. I thought that music will resonate with people, so I adopted music as the medium. But the lyrics that they want to misbehave or take off their uniforms are not real words from the girls themselves. There is a, a real sexualization, some would say exploitation of teenage girls in Japanese society. And in your videos, you do have young girls, either they're dressed in their school uniforms or in bikinis, sexy lingerie, licking food off each other's faces, kissing, uh, bathing. Uh, are you in some way contributing to the problem? No, it's an expression of art. I think you're referring to heavy rotation. And it's the world depicted by an excellent artist, Mika Ninagawa. This is the same as art versus obscenity. 
It's up to personal judgment on how we perceive it. Even so, stylists choose the swimsuits, this and that swimwear for a specific age range. There are talent shows in the West such as X Factor and American Idol that operate quite differently to yours in that they actually identify real talent and then make those people stars. Did you ever consider using that concept? Not so far. I don't think we can stack up against the strength of entertainment in the West. It's very difficult to find talents of that level of singing, acting and dancing in Japan. On American Idol, many great singing talents get together and the winners are chosen from them. Praising their singing talents and buying their CDs are a form of entertainment. But AKB is not the case, and it's about people who want to apply for American Idol, but are not very good at singing. They want to dance on Broadway, but they're not really that good at it. But we show the process of their growth that they are trying and making the effort, which is different from the West. I don't think we could win if we competed on their turf. Are you the, the Simon Cowell of Japan? Well, we can't get that tough in Japan. Do you think that the AKB48 concept would work in the United States or in Europe? Is it something that the West would embrace? I think so. It might turn out to be totally different. First of all, it's accessible so that anyone can participate. After joining, to what extent can you polish your talent? That's the most fun part. And I think American Idol caught on because the stories of the contestants resonate with fans and audiences. For example, a kid keeps winning and we cheer for him. I think the audience sympathizes with the contestants. Perhaps AKB48 is not that talented in singing compared to American Idol winners but they are ready to make the same effort. And once they get together, there will be another story. Hello. Coming up, we go backstage to meet some of the stars of AKB48. So, Mr. Akimoto, we're off to the theater where the girls perform almost every night. Yes, they perform almost every night. Tell me, how did you get into this business? When I was a high school student, my high school was attached to the university, but I wanted to go to another university and was studying for the entrance exam. I was listening to the radio while I was studying, and I thought I'd be able to write the script by myself. And so I sent my script to the radio station. They said it was interesting, and they told me to visit them. That was the start of my career. Thank you. Thank you very much. Yeah. So it all happens. Hello. Oh, wow. Hi. <laughs> the girls are all ready for a big performance yes. tonight? Right now we're getting ready for the performance. So everyone gets ready and they get their clothes on and then they're going to perform in front of 200 and something people. Everyone does hair and they have their own costumes and they dance and sing. Yeah. And, and you obviously all love what you do. AKB48 is really now a business. It's not just the music, you have the nightly shows at the Akihabara Theatre, and I know the group's name is short for that. You have merchandise stores, you have this cafe that you've opened in Singapore. Asia is really embracing this, isn't it? I wonder about this. I don't get involved in the business development, so I don't know. Whether it's an AKB cafe or a shop in Singapore, my role is to create fun content that people will be drawn towards. 
It's like if there are interesting products, stalls and shops will pop up around them. Whether we can have success in Asia or in the West depends on this drawing power of the products. And that is to say, what attracts people will probably be the core of the business from now on. Creators make this core. You grew up here in Tokyo and uh, your musical talent was discovered at an early age. Tell us about that. <laughs> I really have no musical talent. While I was studying, I happened to listen to a radio program and thought I might like to be able to write a script for that program. I sent it to the station and started to work in the field. Originally, I didn't intend to do creative work, so it's not like that my musical talent blossomed at a young age. Before you conceived AKB48, you came up with another girls group, Onyanko Club. How did it differ to what you have today? The Onyanko Club was created from TV, and AKB48 was created from the theater and spread via the internet. The Onyanko Club originated from TV, so it was a one-way street. But AKB48 was born from the theater, so there's a big difference in that they can talk directly with the fans and then connect on the internet and express their views. This is a major business for you, but for Japan it means so much more. Uh, your girls have become ambassadors for the country and when the earthquake tsunami hit, they went on to become uh, representatives for the relief organization, whether it be for the Red Cross or raising money with MTV. What is your vision for AKB48 moving forward? Japan is in pain, and AKB48 wants to spread energy to everyone, first and foremost. And of course, we would like to continue our support activities. Among other things, I would like to send a message with AKB that you can make your dreams come true. I would like to deliver this message, and not only to Japan, but also to people all over the world. Dreams do come true, but how it is realized might be more or less than what you had expected. They're certainly inspirational words. Mr. Akimoto, great to meet you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much.